Hello, everyone. We were going to talk more today about sponsoring your family member to come to the, to the US, but uh, we discovered that Homeland Security published a new proposal that may impact those trying to get a green card and become uh, naturalized citizens. So we thought it would be best to address that today. This proposal is called inadmissibility of public charge on public charge grounds. Um, hi, I'm Raluca Hanea. I uh, provide legal services in immigration, business, and estate planning. And I'm here with my office manager, Nina Clear. Hello. Um, and today we're going to address the new proposal by the Department of Homeland Security. Okay, so that title is kind of confusing. Inadmissibility on public charge grounds. Can you kind of break that down and tell us what it means? Sure. Um, this means if someone receives any type of what some people would call entitlement benefits, such as food stamps, Medicaid, or other public benefits um, that uh, may not be able to obtain a green card or become a U.S. citizen. So why is the government doing that? Uh, this administration had said that they want to only allow qualified people uh, enter the U.S., so this may be a way of ensuring that happens. Um, I want to make sh uh, I want to make clear though that this is only a proposal, uh, but it's very concerning because it does not apply only to people that are not yet in the U.S., uh, but would also impact those who are already here. Um, so a lot of times when there's a policy put in place, people are grandfathered in, basically grandfathered, I'm putting in quotes, mm -hmm. meaning it doesn't apply to them. If they're already here and they're living here and they apply, the old rule is what applies and it, and the new one applies to the applies new people. Applies starting to the date when it came right. into effect. But yes. this one, it sounds like it's going to go back and impact anybody Yes, here. and this is very um, unusual for any kind of law or rule, um, and it seems like um, they want to apply this for people that ha may have received food stamps or, or Medicaid in the past, and now that could affect them um, negatively. Which could become a legal nightmare, really, because yes. it, it's, it's not really a okay that you now are being held to a different standard. Yes. Right. And, and it's probably gonna if this is going to affect I can I can see a lot of lawsuits, lawsuits right. Yes. Where yeah. people are like, hey, it's okay if you want to put that in place, but it should apply after the fact, not not negatively impact the people who already used use welfare when they were able to or supposed to or yes and they were approved for those benefits right when right. they applied for it and they received those benefits so in their mind right they were allowed to apply for it and now all of a sudden that's going to impact their status if they want to um um apply for a green card or for even for citizenship okay so how would the government even know that they had received any of these benefits uh, they would basically ask you in your application and as anything in the application you need to declare um, what happened and if you don't um, that means you you do fraud in your application so you it's it's basically you have to declare that you you receive these benefits okay and I've also heard some talk about a public charge bond can you tell me about that a little bit um yes that's that's crazy but anyway <laughs> they, uh, so they what they are saying is that they 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 are proposing to have people pay a bond so basically to pay a certain amount of money um that would be held by the government and if they got public assistance, that bond would be forfeited perhaps to pay for the assistance they receive. But I just don't understand how they're going to administer that. Administer right? that, yes. I mean, that and then really... what happens if they don't get assistance? Are they getting the money back? Yes. And, and is think... it fair that the government's holding this money and earning interest on it? Exactly. I mean, exactly. I mean it just sounds like a... 
So it sounds like a, a logistical nightmare. Exactly. And it's also going to cost the government more money and potentially the people applying more money, right? That's correct. Um, it looks like the proposal says that it would um, it would cost more money to administer uh, these rules. So these money are are will will come either by increasing the fees with USCIS, um, and we don't know right now what the cost is going to be. They but they estimate they would the fees would increase with about eight hundred twenty five dollars per applicant. So right, right now the fees to apply for a green card are around 1,700. So you add another 825 just for the government filing fees. And then if it costs the government more, they're gonna have to come up with that money somewhere. Right? Yes. Um, but they also say they are save they they are saving um, about two to ten billion a year by removing people from public assistance who are currently on it. Uh, however, that is just an estimate and it's not able to be verified at this time. However, immigrants use fewer welfare entitlement benefits than native born Americans. Uh, immigrants use 39% fewer welfare entitlement benefits per person than native uh, born Americans. Okay, so immigrants do get welfare right now. And because I thought they weren't eligible. Well, actually, very few do. Uh, temporary migrants are ineligible for welfare benefits. Also, lawful permanent residents must wait at least five years uh, before they are eligible for welfare benefits. Um, Those states may provide some from their own tax revenue. Um, illegal immigrants are ineligible apart from emergency um, medical care. So um, so there, there are some that are getting it, but there are not very many no. right now. And uh, can you tell me which ones are getting it? If the pro proposal is saying they're gonna save two to $10 billion, and because people hear billion and they're like, oh, huge savings, right? And then they would support this because that's they're just focused on that amount. Yes, but keep in mind that the U.S. spends 2.3 trillion on entitlement benefits in 2016, and 1.5 trillion went to actually Social Security and Medicare, both of which benefit the el the elderly. Okay, so just to stop for a minute and say, so they're saying we're going to save two to ten billion. And we know 2.3 trillion minus 1.5 trillion is what, like 0.8 trillion or mm -hmm. something. So 0.8 trillion of welfare is being used by everybody and two to 10 billion by immigrants. So that's a tiny little part, a part yes. of a huge one. So which immigrants are getting it? Uh, so naturalized citizens, US born, city, uh, US born children, refugees and asylees are eligible for some welfare program. Um, children of lawful permanent residents are eligible for SNAP benefits and states can extend Medicaid benefits to children and pregnant women um, regardless of their immigration status. Uh, also, uh, in-kind benefits such as the National School Lunch Program, the Special Supplemental Nutrition Program for women, infants and children, also uh, named, also known as WIC, and uh, Head Start are available regardless of immigration status. Okay, so the people getting it are naturalized citizens, U.S. born children, refugees, asylees, and then children of lawful permanent residents. That's correct. Those are the ones who are getting this two to ten billion that might be saved. Yes. Okay. So what would you tell your clients about applying for any type of welfare? So if this um, proposal is going to go through and it's going to be applied, um, if they apply for any of these benefits, their applications for green card or naturalization can be impacted um, negatively. So, but in the same time, how could I 
tell somebody who needs this kind of benefits not to apply for them. I don't think don't anybody. Feed your kids. Yes, don't take them to the hospital. I don't, I, I don't think anybody wants to be in a situation to apply for these benefits. So I suppose they need to do what they need to do. They need to feed their kids and they need to take them to the hospital if if they're sick. Right. Okay. So if a person agrees or disagrees with this proposal, is there anything they can do to be heard? Uh, yes. Right now, because it's a proposal, USCIS um, put a link online where people can submit their um, comments. And uh, you can also uh, call your representative um, if you're able to vote and ask uh, your representative, you know, tell them what do you think about this proposal. And um, so we'll, we'll put a link see, in the we'll comments. Gonna, too, yes, so we'll they put, can see we'll put the link right. in the comments where you can go and read the whole thing. It's it's a lot of information, so we cannot cover that today in You're this right. in this uh, short video. Um, as always, thank you so much for watching. Uh, like and share our video so many people, other many other people can see. It. And um, thank you, and uh, we'll see you next week. Have a great weekend. Bye bye.